Welcome to, uh, to the Entrepreneurship Management Program Breakout. Um, my name is Tom, Tom Supra, last name S-U-P-R-A. And actually, um, I am a professor and also a coordinator for this program here at George Brown College. Entrepreneurship is a little bit different than management. We called it the Entrepreneurship Management Program. But you know, as you know, entrepreneurship is a little bit different than management, right? So it's the kind of thing that uh, people come with passion, uh, you know, they're eager and interested in making money, uh, doing things like this as well. They have a passion for themselves. They want to be their own boss. You know, they're interested in cultivating ideas. They have constantly have ideas. And then they, um, you know, put those ideas to action. That's really what an entrepreneur does. That's my background. I have an extensive background as well. I coordinate this program and all the different teachers here. Um, you know, my background as well is entrepreneurship. I ran my own business from the year two th or what was it, 2000? No, 1990, it's so long ago, 1999 till about 2005, 2006, when I started to transition over to George Brown College and teaching, um, you know, but hey, I have some residual activities that are related to entrepreneurship as well, because I just have passion to do these things also. Um, speaking to potential entrepreneurs, Shane, Naruka, other people that join us later or watch this a little bit later as well, I have to tell you, it's a really rewarding life. It's a little bit different than becoming a manager in uh, you know, companies and things like that. But I want you to have faith and confidence that our program it's an eight month program and it teaches you, uh, you know, the skill sets that you require to put together a business plan and also all the different components of that business plan that are real world, like making websites and things like this as well, um, you know, to prepare you to be that entrepreneur or to launch your business when you're uh, upon graduation. Um, but at the same time, we want to make sure that you shore up the other skills uh, in management also so that you understand, you know, if you happen to not start a business, that you're still gaining some more expertise in that area as well. Management skills are very different than entrepreneurship skills. Entrepreneurs are the ones that create wealth in our society. They create the jobs in our society. And I think that um, I'm an example of that. So uh, I joined George Brown College, uh, you know, many, many years ago, about 22 years ago, I think. Started teaching here as I was running my business as well. Um, and my business was in IT. I have three degrees. My, I have a liberal arts degree and I, an IT degree, and then I have a master's of business administration as well. But the IT degree actually led me to an entrepreneurial endeavor. I had about 16 employees at my height and really the margins kind of slipped. So, um, you know, I had to make some executive decisions for myself as well in terms of, you know, continuing with certain residual clients and, you know, shifting over some of my skill sets towards the organization of George Brown College. So the skills that I cultivated as an entrepreneur out there in the world are the skills that I apply here at George Brown College in building things. So, you know, I, you know, I've worked with teams and built the analytics program here. We're building an analytics degree. We've uh, launched an entrepreneurship uh, type career center called Start GBC, and we've built that out as well. And what I want to do actually is co-create this program with you, the students, because you're entrepreneurs. So Jessica, welcome. You guys are the entrepreneurs. And I, so I know how this works and I wanna co-create this program with, the two, with all of you, okay? That's the whole point of this type of thing. We build things, we grow things, we create entrepreneurship clubs, we do other things, we work together, we find guest speakers, uh, we connect with other entrepreneurs and we try to grow not only our own skills, but our network as well. So that's sort of um, you know, my spiel to start with. Let me uh, show you a little bit about the actual uh, program itself. Just one second, please. And we'll discuss that. If you have any questions as we go, please ask your questions as we go because you know, I'm more than happy to answer. Uh, Keisha, my colleague is on the call as well. She's monitoring the Q&A at the bottom. If you have any questions, please definitely stop me and uh, you know, I'm more than happy to answer your questions because, hey, we are in the COVID situation. And so you know, we want to actually make sure that all of your questions are answered. The Entrepreneurship Management Program is a post-grad program. It's eight months. And so um, you, know, you, take four, you take courses for four months, there's a break, and then you take courses for four more months. Um, I will show you the courses afterward. 
But you know, again, this we called it an entrepreneurship management because really management is one set of skills. Entrepreneurship is another set of skills. Picture it that the entrepreneur is the one that's creating the jobs for people, like maybe running a restaurant or something like this. And they're creating those jobs, generating the wealth and creating those opportunities for people. Of course, the entrepreneur also must have managers, right? They have to have people that will manage their businesses. So they have to understand the manager's role, which is why we want to make sure that you have a breadth of educational experiences, networking and things like this as well. You guys, I invest in two restaurants here in or here at uh, in the city of Toronto, and you know, so my entrepreneur friend who runs these restaurants, she does a phenomenal job. She hires some incredible uh, managers, and I'm so proud of her because she is employing literally hundreds of people. It's fantastic, and I love that. And I think that's what entrepreneurs do. Let's take a look at the the details of the program. Note the, uh, the website that you can go to. I'm sure all of you went there already. You just go on to georgebrowncollege.ca and click or type in B416. That's the name of this program. Here at George Brown College, any program that starts with a four, B4, is a postgraduate program. This is a program that's usually a year or less. Um, and it's for people with a degree or a diploma already or work experience. Um, that they can enter into this program. Okay, um, so all the B400 series programs are like that. Type in B416 into the georgebrown.ca website and you'll come up with this page here that gives you most of the information that you require. Okay, scrolling down here, I won't repeat the information in this uh, video here, but it does talk to you for about 20 minutes about the, uh, some of the contents of the program, some of the teachers and things like that as well. Over here in the menu item, you'll see that we have a number of different things that we can click on, um, you know, including an overview and the full description. I'm clicking on the full description because I want you to see something specific. And I'm going to talk about this in the larger context of the college system in Ontario entirely. Maybe some of you are uh, new to Canada or people from abroad as well. And so, you know, really here in Ontario, the government of Ontario, our province, <clears throat> excuse me, is the one that legislates our de degrees and diplomas. So, you know, our government backs up all of our credentials here at George Brown College. In fact, we are uh, quite a top school. Um, so what we do is we work with the Ministry of Colleges and Universities to create the descriptions of these types of programs like entrepreneurship management. And you'll note when I click on full description, I scroll down to the bottom and you'll see that we have something called program learning outcomes. Each of the programs at all of the college and, and universities use program learning outcomes. In fact, one college writes these and the rest of the, the colleges and universities use these from the ministry, the government downwards. We take these program level outcomes and we turn them into course level outcomes for each of your courses. And each of your teachers is then required to deliver the course level outcomes in each of your courses. So I give you this structure so that you understand how we actually have put this together. Um, when we are building our courses and programs, we talk to a lot of business people, in this case, entrepreneurs, of course, and you know, to ensure that we are hitting the mark and we have things like program advisory committees and other business people out there that actually tell us you know, what we should be doing. But also the people in the program are people like me. As an entrepreneur myself, I grow, spark and build things. Now I'm applying my entrepreneurial spirit and skills to the internal large organization like George Brown College. And in fact, uh, what, you're, what you're seeing is uh, me sort of transitioning and becoming what's called an intrapreneur. These are serious skills that employers really want. Okay, so even if you're not thinking of starting your own business, the skill sets of doing so are incredibly in demand, not to mention, uh, you know, they, they're just really, uh, you know, Employers always tell me that they, they need those entrepreneurs that can solve problems and think critically. So you can read through these program level outcomes and see exactly the types of things that we want you as a student to accomplish by the time or demonstrate by the time you graduate. This is what we are targeting for this program as well. Of course, 
Beyond this program, I want you to be confident that we develop our networks and that we connect with you and try to help you to make sure that your, pro your programs are successful. To that end, we uh, generally have organizations in other areas. Hold on one second, please. I just wanna share that information with you. To that end, we actually do have, um, hang on one second, please. Just a second. We have programs like Start GBC and other pitch it type programs that allow us to actually see things. Oh, here it is, right here. Start GBC. And this allows us to actually see, uh, you know, put all of the things that we learn in this entrepreneurship program to uh, actual action. When I click into Start GBC, this is actually uh, like a career center at George Brown College, but it's geared only for entrepreneurs. We have people out of our gaming design, uh, people out of our uh, you know, construction technologies that need to run their own businesses and everything like this too. And so the opportunities abound at Start GBC. We actually help to build this. So it, one of the arms of Start GBC is an entrepreneurship club that we essentially connect with Start GBC and there's opportunities that abound therein. You can see, for example, there are free tickets for our students to attend the Collision Conference next week, or, uh, which is a fantastic conference and I recommend it to everybody. So we have these structures at George Brown College to support you to make sure that your entrepreneurial journey actually is a good one and also that you are supported with networks of people and other entrepreneurs. It's important for us. Um, coming over here to the courses, you can see we have two semesters. Semester one has a number of different courses here, as you can see. We cover human resources, law, finance and accounting. I have to tell you, I started my own business and uh, you know, I was a little bit weak in my accounting myself, uh, but you know, uh, so I literally had to go back and do my MBA to learn a little bit more about accounting. And so it was important that we put that into this program as well. Entrepreneurial integrated supply chain management is really important too. Marketing, of course. And we want to talk a little bit about digital marketing and the new age and how, how entrepreneurs can engage with the online tools and things like this too. Of course, business research, which is really market research, um, marketing research, and also a little bit more in the analytics realm. I'm an analytics guy, to be honest with you. Semester two has a, a few uh, less courses um, and you know they also have a speaker series. So we bring in different entrepreneurs and other people to speak to you, motivate you, talk to you, connect with you, network with you, um, and so that you can learn from them. Because you know, learning from other entrepreneurs is really the most important thing, I think, in, in this context as well. So you want this whole experience, right? The networks, the people, the uh, connections and everything because you want to become entrepreneurs. And so uh, wh when I was running my business, what I would be doing is going to breakfast meetings with other entrepreneurs, meeting them everywhere, going out to all sorts of very interesting meetings and things. And so I wanna co-create that with you in this program. Help me help you. And uh, you know, together, let's make this program rise up and ensure that uh, you know, ensure that you have a quality education, but an excellent experience as an entrepreneur or as an entrepreneur in a large organization, helping them out, out as well. As you can see in semester two, we do we do have a number of different courses, culminating in a business plan that you create. Now you can take this program and be studying entrepreneurship to move towards becoming a manager because you, what you're doing is you are becoming what's called an intrapreneur, applying the principles and the skills of an entrepreneur to uh, a larger organization. Maybe you're joining a bank or something like this uh, and uh, you know, getting a job there and you are applying skills of entrepreneurship in an entrepreneurial fashion. Um, or perhaps you're actually wanting to start a business. And in that case, excellent. We have the structures and we want to guide you, whether it's for profit or a not for profit. The truth of the matter is, if it's a not for profit, we have an organization as well that we do uh, that we cultivate not for profit social enterprises, and that's called Enactus. 
I'm going to bring that up so you can see it really quickly. I also um, am one of the faculty advisors for Enactus. As you can see, this is in the not-for-profit sector, and it's a huge organization, a global organization, and we compete um, on, in this as well, in the social enterprise realm. It's all about creating a better world. Our team is doing uh, different projects. One is on mental health concerns. Another one is business assistance. We're doing financial literacy for some people. What is your idea that we can bring in the not-for-profit space? And I want to show you that we are also a winning team. I don't know if you can see it or not, but we are a winning team. There's some of our uh, trophies here for that we brought home in the last year, even during the COVID time. I'm very proud of this team. There's about 50 people involved in that. So as you can see, we have a large ecosystem here to assist and help uh, entrepreneurs with all the different things that they would like to do. Other information here uh, includes the tuition and fees, international students. I recommend that you connect with our international center um, that's international INT. Oh, actually, you know what? I'm sure you have the links, but our international center is uh, uh, valuable. So if I click on contact us, you can see there's information here for domestic student admissions, international student admissions, fees, uh, entry advising, and my contact information is here as well. This is me, Tom Supra, T, uh, T Supra at georgebrown.ca. Please feel free to reach out to me regardless of your selection. I love helping people choose. Uh, I love helping people to make decisions and things like that as well. I'm an approachable person. So feel free to send me a message if you'd like to have a short discussion or if you have any questions or anything related to the uh, B416 Entrepreneurship Management Program, any of our other programs, or if you just want a little guidance, to be honest with you. Sometimes people just need someone to talk to and I've had a lot of experience. So I'm here to help you out. If any of you have any questions, please feel free to ask them. Keisha, I think this uh, this is the end of what I need to speak about. Are there any questions or anything at this point? Thank you so much, Tom. Um, again, everyone, if you would like to ask Tom a question, feel free to use the Q&A function, which is at the bottom of your screen. Um, so far, nothing has come in as yet. Hi, Rania. But perhaps there. Welcome. Typing. <laughs> yeah. Jessica, Niruka, Rania, Shane, thank you so much for joining us uh, today. Really appreciate it. If you want to talk to me at any time, you can ask your question here in the Q&A or send me an email if it's a private question or whatnot. And anyone else that's watching this video later as well, please feel free to send me an email with your question or if you'd like a little guidance. You know, I can't tell people what to do, but I can certainly put my head together with you and we can sort of figure out what your journey is going to look like. Uh, regardless of what choices you're making, okay? Sometimes you just sort of need somebody beside you to, to help you to think of the different variables or choices that you have. And, you know, uh, I'm really interested in assisting people to the right program, not necessarily just this program. I think, um, I think you know, we certainly need our youth and other people in our society to make the right choices for themselves so that they get into the correct, uh, you know, uh, programs and, and launch the correct careers for themselves as well. Also, Perfect. yeah, you know, also, if you're young, I want you to know I have a couple of rules of thumb that might help you out as well with stressful decisions. If you are under 30, I still believe you can pull yourself out of the job market in order to go back to school. If you're over 30, I think you have to work <laughs> and you have to go to school at the same time. Uh, otherwise, you know, there may be some trouble with your retirement. So, you know, in terms of finances and stuff. So I do recommend that. Also, um, I would say for young people, I speak to young people a lot. I've been here for 22 years. So, um, you know, I know there's a little bit of concern with rush and, you know, how fast we have to make decisions. And, you know, I kind of adhere to, you know, what my parents taught me, which was that um, you really don't need to know what you, uh, you want to be until you're 40. You need to do things. You have responsibilities to try things, but you don't need to land on exactly what it is until you're 40. So explore and experiment and try different things. You know, why not? Of course, I love that. An entrepreneur is going to say that, right, Keisha? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I'm not an entrepreneur in that sense, but definitely I'm still figuring it out and trying new things. Yeah. We it's do have a question that came in. Okay. Um, how did you go from a BA to an IT degree? 
<laughs> okay, so I did my BA when I was young, when I was, you know, just straight out of high school, directly to university. I actually went to the University of Western Ontario. Um, and then actually after that, I, I received, I got a job over, uh, you know, flying myself over to Japan. So I actually spent five years in Japan. When I came back from Japan, I, you know, I traveled the world. I did the backpack thing and everything. Entrepreneur, right? <laughs> I'm just going to create everything. And so, um, you know, what I did was when I came back from Japan, I realized that my skill sets were not geared for the Canadian economy. So I had to go back to school. And at that time, I was about 27 years old. I went back and I did exactly this type of a program. It was an eight-month program. It was crazy fast and everything like this. And it turned me into an IT professional. This was roughly around 1998. So picture, the internet really has only been, you know, commercialized for like two or three years at that point. I, you know, I mean, I was in hot demand because of the skill sets that I had cultivated. And so eventually uh, I started that business when I was about 28 or so. And I ran that business and then I discovered that I really didn't understand accounting and bookkeeping very well. So, you know, in a self-reflection activity for myself, I said, you know, I think I need a little more schooling. And so my level at that point was I already had a master's in IT. So I needed to do a second master's. And so I went back and did my MBA. By that time, you guys, I was like the leader of the class and everyone's asking me the questions and stuff like that, right? So thank you so much for your question. I hope that answers it well. I think I have the, tri the trifecta right now. I understand liberal arts stuff, you know, I can critically think and problem solve. I've got the IT piece and then I've got the business piece as well. So, you know, I, I it just really has brought me a lot of benefits to sort of have thought about all of these different uh, things over the years. So hopefully that helps. It's been good for me. Amazing. Any other questions, you guys? So far, nothing has come in. Does anyone maybe just have a comment? Feel free to, again, I believe there's a raise your hand function. I could just allow you to hop on the mic. Why not? Maybe also I can mention that, uh, you know, uh, things have been going relatively well with the online situation as well. Our classes are <laughs> quite interesting sometimes. You know, we do breakout rooms and things like this and discussion lists are quite rich. Uh, you know, we're still having the speaker series. You're still connecting with people. Actually, because of the COVID situation and being online, we can bring more speakers in, which is really unbelievable. So there's a lot more connections going on. Um, you know, if you want an example of that, you can take a look at the GBC Analytics Hub that we created. We have about 400 people in there. So we're building this out with entrepreneurship too. Please help me. I need you guys to help me build this. This is what we want to do, co-create with you. Okay, that's the idea. You're entrepreneurs, so you'll help me build this. Okay. Exactly. Nothing has come in yet. No questions, no comments. I guess you covered it all, Tom. You know, it's, it's a also good sign. We're entrepreneurial minded people and probably, you know, they're just info gathering and like me, right? I mean, when I, if I wanted to do an import export business, I would be over at the grocery store taking notes, you know, that kind of thing, right? Entrepreneurs are just the go getters. They're the ones that generate the wealth. They're the ones that give opportunities to others. And even Keisha, you know, you know, I, I find opportunities for other teachers and other people inside the school because I have the entrepreneurship skills or the entrepreneurial skills. Isn't that true? Like, don't you see that? Oh, yes, all the time. So, you know, with the Enactus Club and everything, there's hundreds of people involved in that. I mean, you know, they're all volunteers. They're doing amazing things. But it's just, I think it's the entrepreneurial skills. Do you know what I mean? That are being applied here um, in my case and in the other faculty that I work with that are the entrepreneurs on the staff. You know what I mean? We yes. just do things. That's what we do. Hey, Mina, how are you doing? I think we're ending here. But, you know, if you have a question, please feel free to drop it in the Q&A. So we do have one um, that just came in. What are some ways that someone with no relevant experience in entrepreneurship or business can get into entrepreneurship? That's so you know, this, you know, again, the entrepreneur is the person that doesn't wait around. 
So I want you to think of it this way, even, you know, on my Enactus team, for example, and they're trying to do things like, you know, replace plastic spoons with organic ones, you know what I mean? Like save the planet, save the oceans kind of thing. And they've created the spoon because we have a chef school, right? So they work with the chef school students and they've created the spoon and they're really quite, it's amazing the, the, the types of things that they're doing. What you need is your idea and you have to have people around you that support you. That's the most important thing that people will support you in your choices. And that when you say you wanna choose something or you wanna do something, that they help to guide you, but they don't shut you down, especially as an entrepreneur, especially here in Canada. I ran against a lot of inter interference. A lot of people would say to me, you can't do that, you, you shouldn't do that, you can't, you know, what, you can't. And it seemed like a lot of people sort of had an, a bit of an ego against me being an entrepreneur or they wanted to be an entrepreneur and they didn't have the skill sets. So I wanna tell you that entrepreneurs just get up and go. They are not the lazy ones, they're the opposite. So if I want to answer something, I'm looking for the answer. I'm the one Googling for the answer in the room. I'm the one that actually just takes the initiative. Keisha will tell you I, half the time people are like, what is Tom doing? You know, because I come back and I say, oh, here's a trophy. You know, and people are saying, what? Tom's doing what? So because I just move forward and just do it. So I think that's really the, the, the skill set that I need to help you cultivate. This is what's called intrinsic motivation. Some people are motivated extrinsically. That means that they're sitting back and waiting for a mark, right? Like waiting for the teacher to give them a mark or someone give them a treat or they won't do anything until they get a reward. That's an extrinsically motivated person. A lot of those people go into the management programs. Of course, they're waiting for someone to tell them to click a button. Entrepreneurs are not that. We are intrinsically motivated. We kind of have a feeling of what we want or what we know. We're motivated by things like money, for example. You know, entrepreneurs usually want a lot of money. They want money. And so, you know, that's the kind of thing that we want to do. So my answer to you is to just get motivated. Just be curious about things. Be interested. You know, go out there and look. Whatever the realm is that, of your business that you want to do, get really curious about it. Learn more about it. And don't let other people be naysayers around you, okay? And just move forward with that. Regardless of what you do, if you develop that intrinsic motivation in yourself, it doesn't matter what you do, you're going to be successful. Hopefully that answers your question. That is a great answer. Love it. Um, so I think that is all the questions today. Um, we do have a, a student panel um, actually in the next minute that I'm going to be jumping into. So I encourage you all to, to join if you want to hear from uh, the students themselves and their experience uh, during their their studies at George Brown College and also you know studying online and and what's that like so definitely encourage you to join um, let me she, drop that link Rania uh, Naruka Mina Jessica thank you so much for joining me today seriously reach out to me um, I coordinate the program so reach out to me if you have any questions or anything or you want a little mentorship or anything like that please feel free to reach out to me my email is in the chat um, you know and thank you Keisha for hosting this I appreciate it as well I hope my background wasn't too uh, distracting here as well it's quite the quite the large background so take care have a great day everybody enjoy yourself at our at our open house.